from Utah's first TV station. ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Welcome to ABC4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here tonight. We do have a candlelight vigil for the 16-year-old girl shot and killed in Paiute County that we have coverage of. But first, Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis, Pre Elvis Presley, has died. Now, she was rushed to the hospital following cardiac arrest just earlier today. Here's a view from that hospital. Now, she was put on life support and died shortly after. She was 54 years old. Um... Thank you for coming. Tonight, Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of the late great rock and roll singer Elvis Presley, is dead, according to her mother's publicist. Priscilla Presley releasing this statement to the Associated Press. It is with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter, Lisa Marie, has left us. She was the most passionate, strong, and loving woman I have ever known. The announcement comes just hours after Presley was rushed to the hospital Thursday morning. First responders arriving to the singer's home 30 miles outside of Los Angeles following a report of a woman in cardiac arrest, according to a local fire department spokesperson. Presley was still showing signs of life after EMS performed CPR. Once she was hospitalized, Priscilla Presley asked fans to pray. During her life, Lisa Marie Presley made headlines for her music 20 years ago, releasing the chart-topping album To Whom It May Concern. Her marriages and divorces to actor Nicolas Cage and the king of pop, Michael Jackson, kept her in the tabloids. In 2020, Lisa Marie suffered perhaps her deepest loss, the death of her son, Benjamin, by suicide. Lisa Marie Presley is survived by her three other children. She was last seen this week at the Golden Globes, celebrating actor Austin Butler's win for playing her father in Elvis. She called his performance mind-blowing. Lisa Marie Presley was 54. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. Tonight we're learning more about the 16-year-old girl police say was murdered by a 17-year-old boy. ABC 4's Courtney Johns joins us in studio with more on the vigil that is being held for Jacqueline Nunez. Courtney? Yeah, Emily, this is part of the video that students at Paiute High School put together of Jacqueline Nunez in memory of the life that she lived. Now, the school decided to hold that vigil after the last home wrestling duel because she was one of the managers of the wrestling team. Jacqueline who also went by Jackie, also played volleyball, with many people wearing the number seven, which was her number. Jackie was a young lady, a beautiful young lady. She was happy, she was bubbly, energetic, always smiling. Um, she just brought a lot of laughter and, and fun. The principal says her school has 145 students. Everyone is extremely close, and while the healing process has begun, she says that her students have a difficult road ahead. During this vigil, people lined up to hug Jackie's family, showing them that they're not alone. And they also put this plant stand on the table, something that Jackie made in Woodshop. And she's been taking care of these plants all year. The students gave those plants to her parents tonight. Back to you. All right, Courtney, thank you. In Summit County now, a young teenage boy is in extremely critical condition from an accident on a four-wheeler. The Summit County Sheriff's Office telling us it happened on Frontage Road near Echo, Utah. Two young teenage boys stopped their four-wheelers to make a call, and one happened to park partially on the road. A truck driving by didn't see the boy and hit him, we're told. The, police was, or the boy was airlifted to primary children's with life-threatening critical injuries. Now that truck driver is cooperating with this ongoing investigation. And in an update tonight, two more arrests made in a deadly gang shooting from 2009. Salt Lake County DA's office, along with the State's Bureau of Investigation, arresting two people they say shot and killed a man in his car while driving on I-15. They say Nicholas D. McNeil and Aaron J. Paul Campbell shot at a car driven by a rival gang member. They ended up killing one of the two brothers in that car. After 14 years of investigative interviews and even help from the public, they finally made the arrest. Now, back in 2009, Matthew Day, the man driving the suspect's car, was convicted of manslaughter. And have you seen this suspect in the picture, Sarah South Jordan Police, asking for your help in identifying the individual who stole the truck seen in the photo? Police say he used it to commit several burglaries in another city. Now, if you do recognize this person, you're asked to call the number you see at the bottom of your screen.
Turning now to a first look at the weather forecast, and it was kind of like a spring day today in the middle of winter. <laughs> I mean, I would say so. I definitely felt the warmth, Alana. Yeah, it was mild out there, and it didn't feel like the typical January day. Believe it or not, we're only in the second week of the year, and yes, those temperatures hit 48 in Salt Lake. I want to show you this gorgeous shot from Pleasant View. It's 32 degrees there right now, but how pretty are those mountains? You see them out there just stunning, and we definitely know that temperatures right now sitting in the 20s and 30s along the Wasatch Front, 40 in St. George, mid 30s in Ogden. We're staying above freezing, which, okay, we'll deal with it. We'll take it. 37 in Salt Lake. Cold in Cache Valley. Not a surprise. They were chilly and topped out in the mid 30s today. High pressure taking control after the wet weather tapered off. Few clouds moving through the white, indicating cloud cover, the blue, indicating those higher cloud tops. And we know that they continue to filter through the area, but all in all, pretty quiet. With the Bluebird Day, we still had avalanche danger. And it's because even with the moisture wrapped up, it's still definitely causing impacts. Considerable danger for the Wasatch Front and western Uintas, as well as the eastern side of the state. Heavy wet snow in the high country, so before you head out, you have to be extremely careful. Now, that has led to very good snowpack. Great to see those numbers throughout the state as we sit at a 189% of average. When will we be adding more snow to our snowpack? Well, answers coming up as we approach that holiday weekend in my full forecast. Glenn, Emily, back to you. Thank you, Lonnie. In Salt Lake City, a man behind bars facing arson charges for trying to light the state capitol building on fire last night. Police identifying him as 33-year-old Justin Cromar. When officers asked what he was doing, he allegedly admitted to throwing a Molotov cocktail at the state capitol building and that he also threw one at the church office building down the street. He also apparently admitted to police that he had been drinking. Cromar now in the Salt Lake County Jail. And in another update tonight, court documents identifying the man police say broke into a South Weber home, threatened the woman inside, and set the home on fire. So police say this all happened last night at a home near 1400 East in South Weber Drive. Court documents explain that 65-year-old Jeffrey Hansen broke into his ex-girlfriend's home and allegedly tried to burn it down. When she wasn't home, police say he tied up a woman who was there with duct tape. That woman managed to escape before Hansen uh, reportedly lit the home on fire. That house, a total loss tonight. Hansen facing several charges, including arson and kidnapping. An update on breaking news from last night. A fatal crash in Spanish Fork Canyon. Police say the driver of a Honda, 24-year-old Jenna Bowman, lost control, slid into oncoming traffic, and slammed into a truck. She died at the scene of that accident. The driver of the Ford truck, along with an 11-year-old passenger, taken to a nearby hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. And crews at Glen Canyon Dam recently completed a new water intake connection to accommodate the low water levels at Lake Powell. These efforts ensure that water will be delivered to the cities in the Navajo Nation, even if Lake Powell drops to the point where no excess water can be passed through the dam. With the completion of this project, the water delivery system can now draw water from Lake Powell at three different elevations. A proposed development stirring up mixed reactions in the city of Eagle Mountain. The Lower Hidden Valley Plan is proposing 1,256 housing units be built behind Hidden Hollow Elementary, an area known for its biking trails. If approved, the trails built on private land will need to be relocated or even removed. In the plan, there are acres of land the city is considering selling. Adam Clark, who has lived in Eagle Mountain for six years, says he's worried if this does go through, it can impact how much room they will have left for trails. My guess, our big plea was to them, one, don't sell the, 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 the trails on that one property. Two, we're going to lose a whole bunch of trails. Understand the impact of that and help us find a place to move them. Help us build trails because right now we are going to lose a bunch. Officials with the city say they understand the concerns to keep open spaces and are looking into options to protect wildlife and trails. Utah Auto Expo rolling into Mountain America Expo Center for the weekend. And this year's show is unique. Exhibitors say you can see more makes and models under one roof than have ever been available at the show before. From classics to dream cars, workers getting the cars in place for Friday's public debut. This year's show featuring the latest electric cars, auto tech, affordable cars, and a Utah favorite, the snow friendly cars and trucks. Not everyone can afford all of the dream vehicles, though, so the menu. Manufacturers have brought some affordable ones as well. And to test drive, you can do that as well. They're set up outside for a number of vehicles.
Not only can you come in and see these awesome cars, we can drive them from Ford, Toyota, Chrysler, Ram, Dodge, and more. You can come and see them outside, inside and come out and drive them outside. All right, a one-stop shop. The Auto Expo opens doors Friday at 11, runs through Monday. Kids under 12 are free with a paying adult. Coming up, more classified documents found in President Biden's possession. The response from Washington after the break. And we will have the latest on the severe storms in the western part of the country, killing more than a dozen people. And this is what it looked like at Deer Creek with that sun coming up this morning. You see people out there ice fishing, enjoying what Mother Nature had to offer as we have a break from our wet weather. That doesn't last, though. I'll tell you when our next storm rolls through and its impacts in Utah's most accurate forecast.